Okay, so we're going to talk about custom fields tied to our items. So first of all, I'm going to come in here and get to our items list. So the way that you can see any custom fields or where you go to set up custom fields is by editing any item on your items list, right? Generally, it's going to be a service item and an inventory part um, that we're editing, but go ahead and edit. So right click and edit item. And again, any one, because if I set it up at one item, it's going to show up for all the other items. Okay. So then on the right side over here, I have my custom fields. And I have one set up in here already for weight, but I'm going to go ahead and add an additional. Okay, so let's say we wanted to have color. All right, if you watched my uh, custom field overview video, you can hear about a t-shirt example. So I have my color field here. And I'm first of all, you have to select use, because if you're not going to select use, so let's say we weren't going to use weight anymore, I uncheck that and it will come off of my custom field list of information to fill in. Okay, now it won't let me uncheck it because I do have it on templates right now. So it wants me to make sure, you know, go take it off the template first. So color. Uh, now, when you're in Enterprise, you have the option to have more custom fields than you do in Pro and Premiere. All right. You also have more options of what kind of data. So I'm showing you, right, the, the uh, highest level product so you know what's possible. Um, but of course, go into the product that you're using and see what's available. So in here, we have our any text, right? You can use that as a free type field. Uh, if you are integrating from an outside system and sending data into a custom field, I definitely suggest using any text. Otherwise, any text is kind of too open for anything custom. Okay, because the idea is here, when we're dealing with custom fields, you want it to be a field that we can report on. So numbers aside, right, Any obviously numbers would be different. But if we're allowing people just to type in free text, there probably isn't going to be much consistency, right? So let's say we had color as an example, and I allowed them to type in brown, black, green, red, whatever color they wanted. Well, somebody might type in fuchsia. Somebody might type in, you know, pink. And that might not be an option that we have, but that's just the color that they see on the shirt. So what we want to do when it comes to just, you know, free typing or, you know, color as an example, we want to use a multiple choice list. Okay. And this is available only in enterprise because a multiple choice list is going to be much more effective when we're trying to run reports, right? When you have a multiple choice list, you can say red, blue, oops, green, yellow and the return tells it it's another option when you hit return okay um, so you can have these different options in here notice there's no pink so when somebody tries to choose pink as the drop down they go okay well we don't have pink so it must be red okay so there it doesn't create that inconsistency there um, all right also if you're going to use a multiple choice list you want to uncheck in my opinion <laughs> you want to uncheck allow users to add their own text because if you again you allow them to add their own text then they can add to this list and they could go in and add pink even though we really don't sell pink okay you can also sort the list so that it goes in its natural order and when they're choosing from a drop down they can start typing if they hit when they're in that field if they hit b it'll take them to blue okay uh, all right, so the other options that we have in there, obviously that was any text and multiple choice. Um, we have numbers, whole numbers, okay? Uh, numbers with decimals, allowing two decimals only. It can get kind of annoying when you're dealing with numbers if you limit it, right, to whole numbers or two numbers with decimals because uh, let's say it's two, you have to point to type in 2.00 if you require two decimals, okay? So it can get quite annoying. Um, numbers with any decimals you can put in there. Dates, right, and it'll require it in that date format. The thing with the date fields, if we are using this as a custom field, it doesn't work for like today, hit T type of thing. You have to put it in that format correctly. Phone numbers, right, in that exact format, it'll require it. And then uh, other phone numbers here as well. Uh, several years ago, when it comes to multiple choice also, they used to require that if you were gonna edit the multiple choice list, you had to be in single user mode. That's not true anymore. So if you looked at it a while ago and you said, oh, this is annoying. Every time I make a change, I have to be in single user mode. That's not the case anymore. You can now edit these lists in multi-user mode, okay? 
All right. So then we have over here the required on. So this is one of the few areas in QuickBooks where you can make something required. So I could say that this is required on a transaction. Okay, now it's not gonna require it on every transaction. It's only gonna require it on templates where color is enabled. Okay, so make sure to check out our videos on custom fields, on invoices, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can also require it on the list. So what that's saying is anytime somebody edits a item that's already in there, it'll require us to put it in the custom field. Also, if I create a new item, it will not allow me to save the item unless I have this field filled in. So you wanna be careful, because it's not only on certain items, it's on all items that you're requiring it on. Okay, so I'm not gonna make this one required. All right, now that I have the custom dropdown here, if I fill in the information here, it will default for me on the transactions. So anytime I pick item 06 floor framing, it will default fill in for me whichever color I choose here. Since I don't have it required, I can just say okay. All right, so let's pretend I don't use color on framing at all. No matter what, that custom field's still gonna be here as an option, right? So let's go to a different item. Let's go to roof framing and edit. That custom field's still gonna be here because if I set it up at one item, it's enabled now for all items. So you wanna be aware of that. Okay, but now that it's enabled for all items, I can also put it on my different transactions. All right, so that's how you set up custom fields at the item level.